Uh, Thermite 75. Oh. 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 So, dude, do you have good gun skill, a good understanding of what it means to deny map control to the attackers, as well as an understanding of why drones are the most useful gadget attackers have? If all these apply to you, and if you like to play a hybrid of sneaky and aggressive play in FPS games, then I think you should consider buying Vigil. I think Vigil is a pretty good operator. In fact, I'd make an argument that if Jaeger wasn't around, he'd be the best roamer in the game. Why? Because Vigil is a three-speed with an angled grip SMG, with the ability to deny the map without firing a single shot. Vigil is a great dedicated roamer to go to round after round, provided that your team is providing enough in terms of deployable utility that is appropriate for each site. In a new series I am debuting on this channel called Should You Buy, we'll compare an operator to their peers to give you a better idea of the costs and benefits associated with the operator which should give you a good idea of whether it's worth purchasing them or not. To make your life a little bit easier, I'll be using classifications of operators from Ubisoft's own words. So in this case, in the Rome category, Vigil is being compared to these operators. Let's go from left to right. Before we go through these comparisons, let's take a quick look at Vigil's gun, the K1A. Its labeling as a submachine gun is a bit controversial with dudes who look like this, because in reality, this thing is chambered in a rifle cartridge, not a pistol cartridge. I'm sure Ubisoft uses these labels to tailor the aim down sight speed of the guns in this game, since guns in video games aren't like guns in real life. Since the K1A is labeled as an SMG, when you pair it with an angled grip, its ADS speed is pretty snappy, and that's a nice thing to have when you're taking multiple gunfights. So the fact that it has an angled grip will be considered a plus. It has a rate of fire of 720 rounds per minute, which is lower than average. Not a knock against him, but not a plus either. It doesn't have very much recoil at all, too, meaning Vigil can fight at long ranges pretty easily, so that's a plus. It has a body shot T2K against one armors of 167, would you shut up, man? And a body shot T2K of 250 against two armors and three armors. Monty dead. Oh my god! That was the luckiest hit fire headshot of your life. Oh my god! <laughs> the majority of opponents Vigil will be running into are two armors with high damage ARs, so that's not amazing. The lowest rate of fire on this thing should tell you then that you need to have a certain amount of mechanical gun skill to win fights with Vigil more often than not. Sometimes, if you run into other three speeds, you'll have a little bit of an advantage with that shorter time to kill, but against everybody else, not so much. This might seem like useless information, but I promise it's needed when comparing Vigil to other operators because we'll be weighing cost and benefit in terms of guns as well as utility. But we'll be comparing guns and utility separately. Ever since Oryx took Malu- Where's Malusi on this list? Z what?! Oryx's recent trading of his MP5 for Malusi's T5 only just recently edged him up a bit in terms of fragging power, which in my opinion was sorely needed. There was no point in him having one of the more overrated submachine guns in the game that was only powerful in the hands of Doc and Rook back in the day because of the ACOG scope. Ever since the MP5 had its damage nerfed, it's been a shell of its former self with buffs to other SMGs making it a bit outclassed in terms of raw fragging power. The T5 with its higher rate of fire and a 1.5 times scope for Oryx give Oryx only an ever so slight fragging advantage compared to Vigil, just because of its higher rate of fire and higher damage output against most types of targets. Vigil still has an edge over the purely fragging focused Oryx utility wise, and he has a higher skill cap thanks to his angled grip, whereas Oryx does not have an angled grip. And Oryx is more like a diet 3 speed than Vigil's dedicated 3 speed rating. Alibi's MX4 is arguably a tad bit better than the K1A. The only major downside is its slightly slower body shot T2K against most targets, but it makes up for it with a very fast fire rate. So one can argue with the high rate of fire that it edges out the K1A, but I'm gonna make these comparisons for people with average aim, not shroud. That being said, since they're both three speeds with angled gripped SMGs of comparable strength, I'd say their fragging power is even. Vigil also has impact grenades and alibi has impact grenades which help with roaming considerably you can use them to increase your range of motion in a map 
darting in and out of certain kinds of rooms with Vigil's cloak, or you can use them to get rid of claymores and air jabs at doorways that would otherwise prevent you from executing a flank. So just keep that in mind that impact grenades will help a roamer's fragging potential just a little bit. There are also both three speeds with angle gripped SMGs of comparable strength, so I'd say their fragging power is about even, with Vigil having a slight utility advantage since it's hard to get the most out of Alibi's holograms unless you're really 500 IQing it. Ella continues to be held back by one of the most overrated submachine guns in the game that only has a debatable advantage of any kind thanks to its blisteringly high fire rate and 40 round mag, but it has so much horizontal recoil that it only becomes useful at really close range, which gives Vigil, in my opinion, an advantage over Ella. If Vigil gets into a really close range gunfight, he can just pull out the SMG-12. Maybe it would be a different story if he only had a semi-automatic pistol as a sidearm, but Vigil can fight at long, medium, and short range, whereas Ella can really only fight at close range. His intel denial can go a longer way than Ella's concussive mines, which may or may not give her or a teammate a lucky pick. Legion's T5, just like I mentioned already with Oryx, is very powerful. Legion doesn't have Oryx dash, though, so that lacking mobility advantage makes his fragging power a bit more muted than Oryx. Also, it doesn't have an angled grip, just like Oryx, whereas, again, Vigil has an angled grip. Legion's combination of intel gathering and crowd controlling capabilities give him, in my opinion, a utility advantage over Vigil, though. Now, I don't know why Legion is categorized as a roamer by Ubisoft. I play him like an anchor. Maybe there are some crazy weirdos out there that do it, so be my guest, I guess. Kavera's M12 stinks. She's a fun ranked and pub stomping operator with her semi-automatic shotgun, but other than that, her gadget requires so much for it to go well. Vigil's got the edge both in the gun and his utility by a lawn shot. Valkyrie might be held a bit back by her MPX, but it's not that bad. It's certainly better than the MP5 in terms of damage output. It has a higher rate of fire than the K1A, making the damage differential a bit moot. And Valk and Vigil's utility capabilities are somewhat comparable in strength. Although the argument can be made that Valkyrie has a higher floor because of the set and forget nature of her gadget, and Vigil has a higher ceiling if he can get his frags. Pulse has the utility advantage on Vigil since he is one of the best intel gatherers in the game. He's also a three speed with C4 and an angled gripped. SMG, but the UMP is hard to compare to the K1A. Jaeger is Jaeger. He is arguably the most useful gadget on defense and a gun that puts out a decent amount of damage at every range. Maybe Vigil has the advantage in the hands of a more skilled gunfighter with his three speed rating and an angled grip on the K1A, but for the average person, Jaeger's 416 is nice to have. It is an assault rifle though, so it doesn't have as fast ADS times as Vigil and he can only mount a foregrip. Finally, Bandit can deny the wall, and if a Maverick or an Ace are not in the mix, he can trick it. He also has what I think is arguably the best SMG in the game, competing with the Vector. So he, in most situations, has Vigil beat on those fronts. If you buy Vigil, how should you use him? You should bring him on maps with lots of interconnecting rooms that are difficult to fully clear out. Clubhouse is a great map for Vigil, since it is such a difficult map to hold flanks on. Combine his presence with a mute or a mozzie, or even both, and you'll see how SSG held down Clubhouse for so long in recent memory. It's also not uncommon to bring Vigil for an admin hold on Consulate with all the nooks and crannies and cubicles the attackers have to face check to clear you out from or Capital Bolt you. The top floor roam with the Vigil will usually serve you well, if you can't think of anything else. The rule of thumb, like I mentioned earlier, Lots of adjacent rooms with many corners are Vigil's favorite spots to play, especially with impact grenades. I hope this video helped you figure out whether or not you want to buy this operator. His gadget is a bit difficult to get around, and his guns, while usable, aren't crutches. You need to aim a little bit to get something out of them. But if you have the gun skill and you know how to roam efficiently, I'd say Vigil's a good operator to buy. Thanks for watching. Deuces. Okay, Greg's on a tear. Yeah. Yeah.